Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new build of Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi 4, and this is actually one of the best that I've tested so far. Keep in mind, this is really Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's Windows on ARM. This is not Linux skin to look like Windows 10. I'm on my Raspberry Pi 4 here. BCM 2711 CPU, 4 cores. I've overclocked to 2 gigahertz. I am running from a micro SD card. This is a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra. Keep in mind, if you are wanting to use this build just to test it out, Ethernet and sound is not working out of the Raspberry Pi 4, but you can use USB adapters because all four USB ports on the Pi 4 are working. And we also have access to three gigs of RAM instead of one, like the previous builds of Windows 10 for the Pi 4. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a look at the build and then I'm gonna show you how to install it. And it's actually really easy to install thanks to the Discord channel, Windows on Raspberry Pi. I wanna give a big shout out to Amir and Luke because they have made this super simple to get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi. This is definitely not a daily driver operating system, but seeing the progression that's gone on with Windows on the Raspberry Pi 4, it very well could be in the near future. It's working really good off of an SD card. I personally haven't tested it from an external drive. I'm sure everything would be much snappier from an external drive. But as it sits right now, with a decently fast SD card, you should have a pretty good experience with Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. When you first install this, you'll have a README and you also have the Edge Beta set up. Just double click on the Edge Beta. Go ahead and run it. It's going to install the Edge browser for us because there's no built-in internet browser. But as soon as we get this set up, we can install different browsers in here like Chromium or Firefox. And as web browsing goes, it's really not that bad. Just head over to raspberrypi.org. And as speed goes, I'd say web browsing is on par with other operating systems like Raspberry Pi OS. We also have access to YouTube through the Edge browser. It's not the best that I've seen, but uh, it does work. And in order to get audio out, remember you have to have a USB audio adapter. That's just the way it is right now with the Raspberry Pi 4 and Windows on ARM. but it does work. We'll get a lot of drop frames, I'm sure. I'm at 480 right now. Not as bad as I thought it would be. So yeah, YouTube is working here. We also have access to the Microsoft Store. Now I've installed Pandora, which is one app that I've installed here. And it does work. Unfortunately, I can't play any music here because it's all copywritten. But Pandora works. Spotify works. Netflix does not work, uh, even through the Edge browser. I've tested it, but it just keeps giving me the error when I try to play a movie. iTunes is another one that I've heard through the Grapevine works great. You can try different games here, but don't expect full speed out of most everything. Right now, I've installed Steam. And I've also installed a few games just to show off. Most of this stuff runs at 2 to 6 FPS, but it's something I wanted to show you because these are not ARM games. These are x86 games running on the Raspberry Pi 4 with Windows. And speaking of those, let's go ahead and start up Brawlhalla. It's going to launch through Steam. So as you can see, performance is not great, and that's because this is an x86 game running on this low-end ARM chip, but it is absolutely amazing to see that these Steam games even start up. And I'm probably going to fall off the edge. Yep. Nope. I made it. Just because it's running at such a low frame rate. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this one. And I'm going to start up Half-Life 2. This is also running through Steam. Mm -hmm. 
So lighter apps are going to work much better than games. So if you want to install Office or uh, Pandora or something like that, it's going to work just fine. But uh, these games are really struggling, even these older ones like Half-Life 2. Still, I think it's amazing that they're even starting up on the Pi 4. It'd be really nice to have more people testing different applications on this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install this. Like I mentioned, it's really easy to do. We're going to have to expand the file system, but we're going to do that all from a different PC. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Windows 10 installed to our SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. First thing you're going to need to do is head over to the links in the description. The Discord channel, Windows on Raspberry Pi. Amir has come up with a lot of fixes, and Luke has actually provided us with a preloaded image. We can just flash this with Etcher, makes it super easy. So you're just going to click on this, it's going to open up the Mega. You're going to download this. What is it? 3.3 gigabytes. While this is downloading, we're going to go ahead and grab Etcher. This is going to allow us to flash this image to our micro SD card for a Raspberry Pi. Now this works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to grab the portable version. And finally, if you're on Windows, I would suggest downloading Minitool Partition. We can easily expand the file system after we flash it with this. If you're on Linux, just use Gparted. And as for Mac, I'm actually not sure what to use there. But we're going to download the Minitool Partition. You're going to install it like any other application. I have mine installed already. Once everything's finished downloading, I'm going to place it on my desktop for easy access. Okay, we have everything downloaded. We have the image, etcher, and mini tool partition. The build is 0.2.1.rar as of making this video. It might be higher in the future. We do need to extract this though because it's in RAR format. We're going to right click, and I use WinRAR, but you can use 7-zip if you'd like to. We'll just extract it to our desktop. So we now have it extracted. It's in a folder called build 0.2.1 and we want this image right here. This is the disk image file and it's around 10 gigs. So we're going to start up Etcher. From within Etcher, we're going to choose Flash from File. We're going to locate that build we just downloaded and extracted. Now we need to select our target, which is going to be our micro SD card. I'm using a SanDisk 64 gigabyte card here with a cheap USB 3.0 card reader. And finally, we're going to flash to that micro SD card. This could take a little while depending on how fast your SD card is, so let this finish. Once this is done, we will need to expand the file system using Minitool Partition, or if you have another application, you can use that. But since it's flashing in the background, we're going to install Minitool. I just want the Minitool Partition. I'm not going to launch it yet. I'm going to choose Finish. And we're just going to wait for this to finish flashing. All right, the flash is now complete. I'm going to go ahead and shut down Etcher. And usually what I like to do is unplug my SD card from my PC real quick and just plug it right back in. So now we need to expand the file system of the micro SD card, because if we boot it up on the Raspberry Pi 4 right now, I think there's only 600 megabytes free, but we have a 64 gigabyte card. We're going to use mini tool partition. And from the menu here, Make sure you find your micro SD card and be 100% sure that it's your micro SD card. 60 gigs, MBR, I'm 100% positive that this is my card. So right here, we'll see a Windows partition. We need to extend this partition and we have 50 gigabytes of unallocated space. So on the Windows partition, NTFS, right click, extend, and we can drag this all the way up. I usually just leave a little bit free on the other edge. And this is just personal preference. I've always done this. Choose OK. And before you click Apply, just triple check everything. Make sure this is your micro SD card that you're messing around with. Apply. Yes. And we've now expanded the micro SD card. So we'll have 58.8 gigabytes free with Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll close this down, 
and all we need to do now is move over to the Raspberry Pi. Alright, so for the initial setup, I just have a keyboard and mouse plugged in. I also have my HDMI to my monitor. We're going to insert the freshly flashed SD card. It will take a little while on the first boot, but as long as you see this screen here, you're good to go. Just let it sit. It's going to bring us to the Windows Setup Manager. And once we get into it, we're just going to set it up like we would any new Windows installation. And I do recommend turning everything possible off when you're doing the installation. It's going to give you like location access and stuff like that. I uncheck absolutely everything here. So I'm just going to go through this real quick and I'm going to plug back into my game capture so we can get a better look at Windows 10 running on the Pi 4. And that's about it. Make sure you do install the Edge Base setup. This will install the Edge browser for us. Like I mentioned, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and sound aren't working right now, but you can use USB adapters for each. I have a cheaper USB Ethernet adapter. I think it's the Amazon Basics. It does work here. It works really well. I'll leave links for that in the description, and it can definitely come in handy down the road for other projects. Here we have the BCM 2711, 3 gigs of RAM, and like I said, definitely install that Edge browser. As you can see, we do have access to the Microsoft App Store, you can go online and download different applications and test them out. Like you saw, a lot of games aren't going to run at full speed. I don't think there's anything that's going to run at full speed except for older emulators like SNES and NES right now. But it's still really, really awesome to see full Windows 10 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. I want to give a big shout out to the Discord server, Windows on Raspberry Pi. Link for that is in the description. Super helpful over there. So if you do run into any issues, you can always ask a question and they'll be more than happy to help. I also want to give a big shout out to another channel, Lee PSP Video. Definitely check his stuff out because he deals with this a lot. The Windows on the Raspberry Pi. Every time there's a new update, he does a video on it. He's got a lot of tutorials over there and it's just a great channel to be subscribed to. Lots of awesome information over there. I hope you have Windows 10 running on your Raspberry Pi. Links for everything I mention are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.